evaluate the limit as x approaches negative 4 of this fraction and could I plug in the negative 4 in for x right away? No. And why is that? Because if we were to do that, we would actually get 0 in the denominator. And we can't have that. So what can we do? Well, I can factor the trinomial that I have in the numerator as well as the trinomial I have in the denominator. Then we're going to hope that something cancels out so that we can actually plug in the negative 4 for x. So, 3x squared plus 13x plus 4. If you want a refresher on how to factor trinomials, you can visit our website. If you're not already there, of course. <laughs> um, okay, so two numbers that multiply to whatever these numbers multiply to. 3 times 4 is 12. And those two numbers must add up to 13. What two numbers multiply to 12 and add up to 13? 12 and 1. So I can break down the 13x into 12x plus 1x. The 1 is a bit redundant, but I'll write it anyway. And then everything else comes down to 3x squared as well as the 4. And now I will factor by grouping those two with these two. So over here, 3x squared plus 12x, the greatest common factor is 3x. And I can factor that out then. 3x squared divided by 3x is just x. And 12x divided by 3x is just 4. Great. Now what is the greatest common factor of x and 4? You just 1. Right, so I need to factor that out, basically. Um, x divided by 1 is just x. 4 divided by 1 is just 4. Great. Now look at this, we have the x plus 4 written twice, so I can just write it once over here, and I have the 3x plus 1. That's how factoring by grouping works. Right, so I just have the x plus 4 twice, so I just have it there once instead, the 3x plus 1. Great. So that's what we have in the numerator. But what about the denominator? We're going to have to go through the same thing. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> sure it is. So two numbers that multiply to whatever 2 and negative 12 multiply to, which is negative 24. And the two numbers need to add up to the middle term, which is 5. What two numbers multiply to negative 24 and add up to 5? How about 8 and negative 3? So I'll split up the 5x into 8x minus 3x. Bring down the negative 12. Bring down the 2x squared. Great. Factor by grouping now. The greatest common factor of 2x squared and 8x is 2x. 2x squared divided by 2x is just x. And 8x divided by 2x is just 4. Fantastic. Now, between negative 3x and negative 12, we can factor out a negative 3. Negative 3x divided by negative 3 is x. Negative 12 divided by negative 3, positive 4. Great. Now what do we do? We write down the x plus 4 just once. Then we have just 2x minus 3. Fantastic. Now I can just rewrite the whole thing. Limit as x approaches negative 4. In the numerator I have 3x plus 1 times x plus 4. In the denominator, I have 2x minus 3 times x plus 4. Look at that. And coincidentally, we have x plus 4s here that can just cancel out. Marvelous. Now, what can I do? Now I can actually plug in the negative 4 for x. So I have 3 times negative 4 plus 1 over 2 times negative 4 minus 3. Negative 4 times 3, negative 12, plus 1, over negative 4 times 2, negative 8, minus 3. Negative 12 plus 1, negative 11. Negative 8 minus 3, negative 11. Negative 11 
divided by negative 11 is just positive 1. Look at that, all this work just to figure out that the limit as x approaches 4, or sorry, negative 4 for this marvelous fraction is just 1. So now I suggest you try out some more questions and good luck.